Welcome everybody to Let's Talk Assassin's Creed, your animal podcast for all things Assassin's Creed. This is a unique episode, so which I'm kind of excited for because we're not looking at the loss. Well, we are, but we're not. So, and by that I mean is everything in Assassin's Creed has happened, has happened, and it's set in stone. Whereas this episode, we're going to look at the what if. What if certain moments in Assassin's Creed history never happened? Or what if they happened? in a new way? Would the ripples of time change? Would the outcome be the same? Or would the whole world just descend into chaos and destruction? Now, as a side note, I do realise that there was one point, which is going to come on later on, that may get answered in Valhalla. Now, I am two arcs away from completing Valhalla, so be warned that my thoughts on this certain phenomenon may change when I beat Valhalla, but this moment in time, I'm pretty certain what my thoughts are, maybe to do with Valhalla before I completed it, if that sort of makes sense. So I hope you enjoy this episode, and let's dive in with our first what if. And let's go right back to the beginning. And let's look at what if Saturn, Juno's husband, uh, Juno's father, I mean, sorry, was never killed by humans. Now we know that. The Isu themselves created humans as genetic slaves, essentially, and they used pieces of Edens to bend them to their own will. Now, it is the death of Juno's father by the first human uprising that seals her hatred for humans. So what if that never happened? What if Juno may have had this underlying resentment towards humans? Maybe she wasn't fond of the creation, she wasn't too impressed. But with no severe loss in the family due to humans, no turning point for her to seal her hatred, what if she just quietly went along her business experimenting, or maybe spending her time helping the triad in actually finding an answer to stopping the Toga catastrophe? Because in my eyes, from reading about the Toga Toga catastrophe, the triad was split. We had Juno and Minerva, they were all, you know, very set on it with Jupiter, and they were trying the hardest to figure out a way to fix it and prevent the Toba catastrophe. And what if that could have had a bit more help with Juno, but maybe Juno secretly wanted it to fail? You know, Juno kind of think, well, if we can make a contingency plan, because we know that in the law, they do run several simulations to find Desmond, who puts a stop to the second Toba catastrophe. So what if Juno back after Saturn got killed knew there could be a way for her to be resurrected in the future as the only Isu to then destroy all of mankind because that's kind of her plan. I'm guessing it's a plan, probably not, but she does have a lot of resentment towards humans and she does flitter she has been opposed to both temple and assassin activity, so she's not. Well, she's supported and opposed. So, in the current law, she's in between. She's not solid. So, what if Saturn was never killed and the human uprising went ahead, and she decided to help the triad, maybe find a way, and maybe she saw Desmond's timeline, saw what humans were going to become, and then she discovered, you know what? I don't like that future. I don't like what humans are going to do. The war, the death, the assassins versus Templars. I don't like this. This is not a world I want. I want a world where the Isu reigns supreme, putting the humans back under the thumb. So she helps the Triad to create a greater network of stopping or protecting a huge chunk of Isu civilization from the catastrophe, preventing it from happening, meaning even if partial 90% of the world is burnt and destroyed, that 10% left of Isu knowledge and power is kept, and they can go about their lives. Humans maybe get oppressed again, they find a stronger way of making sure they don't break free, and life just changes. There is never any war, there's never any assassins or Templars, and what if that's a better life? I'm... I'm not trying to say that it may be better than what we've seen in the games, but we know in the games that assassins are chaos, 
Ten Plaza Order. It's just a natural way of things, but what if Juno never wanted that? If if Juno had saw what humans could do after the death of her father, maybe she'd find a way to if she can get there into the future, if she could maybe control it herself, maybe she can exact her revenge her own way. But with Saturn never dying, maybe she never has these ideas. Maybe she wants to help and maybe she wants to preserve East life to find a way to preserve forward and keep assassin well humans, I mean, under fun. The second question I would like to look at is a bit further on in history. And that is nineteen forty three. A turning point in Assassin's Creed history because Several years later, in 1952, a letter was sent to Clinton B. Rosenberg, which was an uh, upcircles scientist, about the triple helix DNA model and his focus on research in it. And in 1976, Dr. Warren Vidic began drafting blueprints for what would become the Animus. So from 1952 to 56 to 1976, we know that this is where the idea for the animus came into play. But the crucial part is 1943. Because in 1943, Project Rainbow, also known as the Philadelphia Project, was a joint venture between the Brotherhood and the Temple Order to alter the past in order to prevent the horrific persons of the uh, horrific events of World War II. It fails, of course. But the USS Elderbridge, the ship where the experiment took place, did temporarily manifest in a future state for 18 minutes, and the Apple of Eden was severely damaged. Now, that screamed time travel to me. So what it's essentially saying is in 1963, well, 1943, Project Rainbow found a way to time travel, and mess around with time itself. It fails. So in 1952, a scientist is researching the triple helix DNA, finds it, keeps the information under wraps, keeps experimenting. The 1976 Dr. Warren Vidic makes the animus, something we all know to this day as a way of experience in the past. But if Project Rainbow, or well, Project Philadelphia, never failed, if this test went successful and they were able to change the horrific past of World War II, there would have never been a need for the animus. Why would you need to use a DNA system to read encoding memories to relive a life when you themselves could go into the past and change it. What chaos could this have brought? Now we know this is a joint venture between uh, the Templars and the Brotherhood, so we know that if they worked together it could have been manageable, but for the sake of a what if, if there was a fallout and the Templars stole the knowledge or the Brotherhood stole the knowledge, <laughs> you get this idea of a war between time itself. Maybe they may go on and do the animus. So what if, even though they do have the power to travel, to create the animus to find certain key events of the past, which I think is unlikely because if they already know how to time travel, I could assume that they could look at written history. Xerxes killing Xerxes, Darius killing Xerxes, and the Palipinian war with the hidden blade could have been stopped. The Templars could have gone back in time and stopped it, preventing Xerxes from never dying and completing his wish. It would have been a pivotal point in the creation of the hidden blade for the assassins. What if the Templars went back in time and killed Bayak and Aya before they were ready to make the Brotherhood? If everyone went to plan, Aya would never have started the Roman Brotherhood. If they stop that, that's a critical point in AC law gone. But what if the Brotherhood themselves exacted revenge and they took out Cain? Because we know the mark of Cain would become synonymous with the Templars because of his action to defeat Abel with a piece of Eden. What if every battle the assassins ever lost, they won, but every battle the Templars won, the Brotherhood lost? This is a fight on time itself, and it sounds far-fetched, but Project, but Project Rainbow was essentially time manipulation. They had the sole idea of stopping World War II, a, a very noble cause that I can agree with stopping. 
But if it if they did stop it and they stopped the horrendous events of World War II, wouldn't that cause a paradox in itself? Because they created Project Rainbow to stop World War II. And if there's no World War II, there's no need to start Project Rainbow, therefore causing a paradox and pretty much ending the world. So what if so what we can draw is if what if Project Rainbow Project Rainbow succeeded is two outcomes. There's only one outcome actually. Paradox and end of time. Project Rainbow was eventually scrapped, thank thankfully, but if it did succeed, if what if it did succeed would result in a paradox and end of the world. This is something that kind of needs goes on to a next point. And now this next point is very dramatic. What if our world is a lie? What if every game you've ever played is a lie? What if every moment of Altea Nezio is a lie? Maybe Edward never sailed on the Jackdaw? It's a lie. The observatory never existed. It could have been a lie. The whole idea that we are sitting here right now in Assassin's Creed, fixing the past, well, reliving the past through simulations, could have been a lie. What if time itself is a lie? These are all big questions that sound confusing, and I get confused. But I'm referring to the empirical truth. Now, I'm not going to read the empirical truth itself. I will direct a good friend of mine who did a really good episode on empirical truth, vision of the past. I will link his um, empirical truth in an episode as a good shout out because he does talk about the empirical truth in a good way. But my synopsis is with the empirical truth, it basically talks about everything you knowing being a lie. Every sensation, every taste, every colour of blood it even mentions is a lie. They even mention about Desmond Miles breaking the code of time by saving everyone in 2012. Thus, it's going to start again. Which is, I believe, what Valhalla is doing. So, that's my point from the beginning, how I've not beat Valhalla. So, what if... <laughs> What if the empirical truth isn't a warning to Layla? We, we believe it is. We believe it because it's her that he's, but what if it's not? <laughs> what if it's a warning to somebody else? A higher power that we don't know about? Because the empirical truth does state that they ran through countless simulations to find Desmond. And they found Desmond. So, so but... <laughs> If they if they're using a simulation to find Desmond, and they're talking about Layla experiencing everything in a simulation, Athea Athea in Odyssey was able to create a simulation within the simulation, so Layla and Cassandra could figure out the spear. So, is it real? Is what if it's not? I am going to read a quick quote. Uh, segment 1, um, it's been 91 days since Great Catastrophe, Messenger Speaks, and this is the big part. How real is the ground you walk on? How real is the machine you toy with? The music you hear, the love you, lover you kiss, or the foe you hate? Your foot touches the ground, does, does that make it real? Your enemies bleed deep red, does that make them real? The confusion grown due to, due to my words, does it make you real? And to me... <laughs> What if it's not real? What if all this time we are living the memories of Altia, Ezio, Connor, Haven Kenway, the very first part, Bayak, Ed, Ev, 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 Eivor, pardon me. What if they're not real? We assume they're real because we are living them through the simulation through the animus. But what if for the actual world Layla's in is just another simulation? I have joked in the past that the very, 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 very last Assassin's Creed was, and it was just a dream. An Isu waking up. And that would be a kick in the teeth, in my eyes, for how to end this such a great series, but what if you can? What if everything we know is a lie? And I know I'm repeating myself a little, but what if the empirical truth itself isn't a warning to Layla? Isn't a warning 
to the future, but a warning to someone beyond Layla, a higher power that is watching the simulation. And every time something goes wrong in the simulation that they're not happy with, they reset it. Sounds half fetched but the dinosaurs, they got wiped out. Maybe the way that simulated life wasn't good enough, they reset it. The Isu was going well, they probably found the best civilization, it was balanced, it was fair. I believe there was a, um, a war with the Isu, then the humans uprised, so they reset it. Life was going normal, yeah there was a bit of war from humans but maybe it wasn't too catastrophic, but then by 2012, you know, we started burning fossil fuels, the world was dying from our own pollution, so this higher power reset the simulation. Well, try it, but Desmond's like, nope, I'm not, I'm gonna die to not do that. So the, the simulation didn't get reset, and I think it's trying to reset now, so is it far-fetched to believe that the empirical truth isn't a warning to us, but to a person who runs the simulation? And then they, what if it's not real? Every character you love, every story you've loved, every world you've visited in time isn't real. What if we're just in one big simulation, waiting to see how it ends? Our next point is one that I kind of I've looked at quite a lot, and I would like it to not have happened because I would like to see what happens next. And that is, what if Daniel Cross was never a sleeper agent? Now, for you, for anyone who's not sure who Daniel Cross is, but Daniel. Um, Cross was the great grandson of Assassin. I'm probably going to get told off for pronunciation, so I apologize. Nikolai, Nikolai Olov, who was the Russian assassin from the Chronicles series. Now, he was abducted by Warren Vidic. He had um, implemented into false identity, associated memory into the mind, and his sub directive was to kill the mentor of the Assassin Brotherhood. With the further um, directive to kill him, hidden even deep in his mind, Vidic then abandoned the child. So he's basically a sleeper agent, ready to burn the assassins. And the assassins took him in after he suffered lots of hallucinations. And the assassin Hannah Muller, known as Daniel, uh, menacing bystanders, accused him of being a Templar. She intervened and took him into an assassin training camp where they researched Daniel's identity. And, you know, through a bleeding effect, he remembered his sub-directive. And once he got close to the assassin mentor, who provided him with a cer ceremonial hidden blade because of his work with the Brotherhood, it kind of uh, it triggered the sub-directive. Sub and he used the hidden blade to kill the the mentor of the Brotherhood. And what followed was the Great Purge. This is where Daniel Cross used all his information and training from the Brotherhood to wipe out the Brotherhood themselves. The only moment in history from the law where the, where the Templars were going to win. This is a pivotal point where the Assassin's gone from such an almighty force against the Templars to being nothing. Well, next to nothing. Um, William Miles did take upon the role and he did assume leadership of various cells, but he never <laughs> assumed the title of mentor. So, what if this never happened? What if Daniel Cross never was a sleeper agent? Would things have changed? Well, possibly dramatically, because when we play Assassin's Creed, we follow some small sounds. We follow a lot of Sean and Rebecca, two great characters. We see William Miles himself. We know that Desmond grew up from training as an assassin on the farm, which you see in the um, little memory puzzles from Revelation, which glad to see uh, Valhalla has similar types, but that's a different topic. <laughs> so we know there's like little areas where these little cells operate in. We know in the comics, um, Charlotte Cruz had her own cell. We know that Leila Hassan worked with Charlotte Cruz and then ran her own cell in the Altair 2. But these are very small people, small small groups, and when you look at games like um, the Ezio Collection, from you'll see that there is a lot of assassins in there. You know, all the Italian assassins. Brotherhood is quite big. When you look at Unity, you see the whole Brotherhood in France. It's quite big. Could you imagine if 
that was all over the world. If Daniel, if Daniel Cross was never a sleep agent and he never went out and caused the Great Purge, then there is likelihood that the Templars would have always been butting heads with the Assassins during the creation of the Animus. And if there's no Great Purge, then maybe there would have been more resources to figure out the Toga, catas toga Catastrophe in 2012. Maybe Desmond wouldn't have died. Maybe when we played the games, we wouldn't have just been... I think Assassin's Creed 1 different because he was kidnapped, but, you know, like, 2, where he goes off into the villa and relations and stuff like, well, 2, Brotherhood, he goes to the villa, 2, sorry, my game's jumbled up. But all those actions, he, he goes it alone. It's just him, Lucy, Rebecca, Sean, on their own. But if there's never a great purge, they would have had more resources. There could have been a better hideout for them. There could have been more resources and more secret places for them to run this anonymous experiment. Could have been probably boring to see that he breaks out of the Absterco fact um Absterco research plant, go to a safe house, and that's just it. They never find the safe house. And they could have used it as a hub world to go to different locations like the Dinner Free, but May have made the story a bit boring, but still the what if. There could have been more opportunities for games. Now I know this pulls out of the lore and focuses on games, and this is just a slight deviation, but if the Great Persian ever happened in lore, that would mean there'd be more modern day assassins for us to see, to train, to feel, to live stories. So far a lot of assassins' memories have come through the Helix Cloud. They're not from living ancestors. Arno and Jacob and Evie were from the Helix Cloud system. Charlotte Cruz in the comics was playing a virtual reality system and living the life of um, a different assassin through, I think it was like a cowboy assassin, through the virtual reality system. Desmond's Blood was used as a pirate game system in Black Flag. And there would have been more, I think the point I'm trying to get is there could have been more variation. And I know from a story perspective it's good for in Desmond, but how many countless assassins could there have been if there was no purge? And how many different diverse stories and histories could we have seen all over the world? We know that the recent games have been using DNA. No living sources, just DNA. But it would be cool to see more. <laughs> it, it's kind of hard to put in words, but I just... If the Great Purge never happened then that would mean there is more Brotherhood cells out there. More brother, more assassins take the fight of Abstergo. Abstergo may never have created in power. Abstergo may never have been able to do as much research into the Animus without the threat of the assassins knocking on the door. This great purge created such a pivotal moment for the Templars that they were able to rise to power and fund all this stuff in secrecy for the Animus projects without the worry of the Brotherhood just knocking on the door and demanding answers or freedom for the people. And maybe if Dan Cross was never there, then this would be something different. We never know. And that is all we've got time for today. I, there is a lot more in the Assassin's Creed lore. There's hundreds of thousands of stuff you can look at and branch off. And this is the first what if I planned. And if you would like to see more what ifs, please send me a message. Send me the different scenarios you would like to see or think of. Because all these thoughts discussed today is just my own interpretation of my own thoughts. It could be different. It might never have happened. But all we do know is that Assassin's Creed has such a stable law in history. There is a lot of turning points where things could have been different. And I think it's a cut kind of fun little way to explore situations that could have been but never were. So thank you all for listening and I can't wait till next week because I've got a little Christmassy surprise for you all with some special guests. And I've got some more surprises on the way to be honest. So from now till New Year, keep an eye on Twitter. There'll be a few surprises along the way. Thank you all for listening, and I'll catch you all next week.